Time now 535. We're hearing now from the victim of an attempted home invasion who shot an intruder. Let's get right out to Steve, who actually spoke to the man who's now telling the story. Hey, Steve. Yeah, this was a hold up uh, just before 10 as the guy arrived home and we're in a safe area. That's the Mayfair Community Center. All the parks there. There's not a piece of trash on the streets here. This young man, 25, parks his Dodge Hellcat. He backs into his spot. That's his apartment with the lights still on, I should say, his soon-to-be former apartment because he told me he is out of here. And when I asked him if he had a legal permit to carry a concealed weapon, he said yes, and everybody who abides by the law should also get one. He comes home. Two guys identify themselves as police. One guy is wearing a badge around his neck. They put a gun to the guy's head. They're telling him, don't effing move, I'll blow your effing head off. They put him against his wall. He lives in an upstairs apartment. He never made it into the stairs. They never home invaded because they never went into the home. They just go in the doorway and they are putting a gun to his head. He knows he's got a girlfriend upstairs and they zip tie his hands. And they don't do a too good a job of it because they don't search him either like real police would. And while the guy with the gun and the badge is looking away and the other guy is without arm's length distance from this guy, this guy reaches into his pocket, pulls out his legal gun and blows away the guy with the badge and the gun, shoots him six times in the head and the chest. He's pronounced dead at 1019. The other guy runs for his life. The other guy and his girlfriend call 911 and police arrive shortly after 10.02 p.m. I was coming home from, uh, from the backyard. They came, uh, they was right there, like they coming towards the front. So when they was coming, and they told me, like, like, you know, they told me, like, you know, they tied my hand, and like, I got, like, you know, I got, somehow I got, like, untied myself, and like, you know, got out of it, like, I just, you know, and then, and I got next to the wall. I was near the wall, so they couldn't, like, see me reach my pocket. So when I pull out, and I put, like, they had a gun right behind me, like, right behind me. So I pull out, like, said, don't move, I'm going to kill you. And, like, you know, I was, I was a little nervous. Like, I was always, like, shocked. Like, so I pulled out, and it just, like, shot right at him. Like, and that's it. Did, did these guys say they were cops? When they came up to you, did he have a badge around his neck? They did have a fake badge. They had the a badge around their neck? Yes, the police said that um, they found a fake badge. And in fact, police, uh, a detective I talked to says the badge was still around his neck after they pronounced him dead at the hospital. So they got the bad guy's gun, which was left on the stairwell, along with six bullet shells from the good guy's gun. Police have that gun as well, just for evidence. They have released the girlfriend and the guy who fired in self-defense. One veteran detective, he goes, I've been doing this for 35 years. I've never seen it this bad. This case is going to be 100% justifiable for sure. And as bad as the mayor might think it is that the people are getting guns to arm themselves and fight back, here's a case where the good guys are alive and the bad guy is dead. Thank you so much, Steve. We got to figure out ways to do something about this. This has got to stop. But thank you, as always, for getting the information.